What's up everyone and welcome to round two with the Intel Core i7-8700K Coffee Lake CPU. Today we're going to take a quick and dirty look at what it's going to take to overclock this thing to 5 GHz and what that means for you in gaming performance and also multi-threaded performance at the same time. Before we go any further, we're going to have the obligatory disclaimer where I tell you that I'm in no way, shape, or form responsible if you melt your brand new Coffee Lake CPU by following any of the things that you see in this video. That's all on you. Alright, now that all that garbage is out of the way, we can move on to the fun stuff. The first thing I want to mention is that not all CPUs are created equal. So just because my i7-8700K requires a certain level of voltage to hit 5 GHz doesn't mean that yours is going to hit that at the same voltage. You could use more voltage at 5 GHz or you could use less to get your stability. Every CPU is going to be a little bit different. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these settings. So don't just go ahead and configure them the way I have them and then assume that your 8700K is going to hit 5 GHz rock solid stable all the time. My overclocking target with the i7-8700K was 5.1 GHz and for the most part I was actually able to achieve that. The problem however is that I had to use almost 1.4 volts on the v-core. That resulted in insanely high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s and not a hundred percent stability. Gaming and most benchmarks were perfectly fine but a couple instances of Asus real bench froze up on me. The system didn't crash or anything like that but it did kind of lock up on me and I was forced to use task manager to end those tasks. In my opinion that's not a hundred percent stability even though you know it is a stress test I understand that um, but I always go for 100% stability in anything that I run so I decided to dial my overclock down to 5 gigahertz and that's what I'm going to show you today. Have a look at these settings. I'm using a Gigabyte motherboard and this is what the current version of their BIOS looks like on their Z370 motherboards. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into advanced frequency settings which is right at the top of my menu here. I'm going to go down to the CPU clock ratio and I'm going to set that to 50. I'm targeting an overclock of 5 gigahertz, so this is 50 times 100 megahertz CPU base clock, which is up here, which I'm not going to touch. That'll result in a CPU frequency of 5 gigahertz that you can see here. The base frequency is 3.7, so this is a pretty respectable overclock. The next thing that I'm going to do is go into advanced CPU core settings, and I'm going to scroll down to what is almost the bottom, where you have all of these uh, power saving states. These are called C states. These are things that Intel builds into their CPUs to sort of save power. So we're going to disable all those because um, well, when you're overclocking, you tend to throw power efficiency out the window. So if you're concerned about power efficiency, you might want to turn this video off now. Um, once you've got that stuff set up, we're going to go back a little bit here, and we're going to go into the advanced voltage settings. I'm going to go into advanced power settings, and I'm going to set the CPU vCore load line calibration to the highest level that it has, which on my motherboard is called turbo. There are other options here like auto, uh, standard, high, and turbo is my maximum. I already know from messing around with things earlier that this is what I need. So what this does is it prevents v-droop. So it's going to take your v-core or the voltage being delivered to your CPU, and it's going to hold it as close as possible to the value that you set. So it's not going to drop. What happens when the CPU is normally under load is the voltage will drop a little bit. Um, that may be a good thing in some cases because it reduces less heat. Um, but it can cause instability and when we're overclocking we need the best uh, chance at stability that we can get so I'm going to set this to turbo. Once you've got that set we'll hit CPU core voltage control and I know from messing around with things earlier once again that I need a CPU V core of 1.34 volts in order to maintain stability at 5 gigahertz in every application. I can actually go down to about 1.32 and gaming and everything is actually okay but when I run a bunch of instances of Asus RealBench um, the, the bench will actually stop once in a while. The system won't crash or anything like that but it will halt the benchmark and I go for absolute stability when I'm overclocking so that is not acceptable. So I bumped the voltage up to 1.34 and my temperatures are still pretty good and we'll talk about that later. So that's all I'm going to do. The only other thing I want to mention here is that you're going to want to make sure that your memory settings are set up to use your extreme memory profile. If you haven't done so, go ahead and enable your memory profile. You may have one or two different profiles on there. Uh, pick the one that is to your liking, and if you don't have XMP on your memory, which I think is unlikely because pretty much all memory has it built in these days, uh, but if that were the case, you would have to manually configure your timings. So that's it. Once you have all that set up, I'm going to go ahead and hit F10. I'm going to hit yes, I want to save the configuration and exit, and go ahead and boot into Windows. So we've got our 8700K dialed in to 5 GHz even, it is rock solid stable and idling in the low to mid 30s with the Corsair H105 all-in-one closed loop liquid cooler running a push-pull fan configuration. The only thing left to do is play some games and run some benchmarks to see what this overclock can actually do for us. 
check it out. There you have it. The i7-8700K is an absolute monster at gaming and has unbelievable overclocking potential. Overclocking this CPU will not only get you more frame rates in 1080p gaming, but in things like Cinebench and rendering video with Adobe Premiere, there are huge gains to be had by upping the clock speed to this level. An overclock of 5 GHz saved us significant time when exporting video, and in Cinebench, it actually overtook an 8-core Ryzen 1700X. That is mighty impressive considering we're only using 6 cores and 12 threads. Moving things along here, we obviously can't make a video about overclocking and not at least mention power consumption. We were able to hit 5 GHz on our i7-8700K with a 1.34 volt V-Core, which is actually pretty good. However, I was using a hardware monitor to monitor the total CPU package power when I was running Cinebench R15 and exporting videos with Adobe Premiere Pro. What I noticed was at one point during that testing, the total CPU package power peaked at 150 watts. That is absurd. That is an unbelievable increase from the stock settings. That is something that you really need to keep in mind when looking at a thermal solution for the CPU, especially if you're somebody that does a lot of processor intensive tasks. If you have one of these new Coffee Lake CPUs, the i7-8700K or even the i5-8600K, leave a comment and let me know just how much voltage it took you to hit 5 GHz and if you were able to go any further than that. I'd be very interested to find out. And that's all for today guys. That's my quick and dirty look at what it takes to hit 5 GHz on the Intel Core i7-8700K Coffee Lake CPU. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos just like this.